I'm Desmond Tutu, and this is for Echo for the World. Our planet is calling out for help, and companies are answering with environmental and sustainable development. Johnson and Johnson joins WWF to supply a village in Kenya with clean water, a dispensary, and better education. This is the Kionga Marine National Reserve in southeastern Kenya. It's a busy environment filled with a maraud of sea animals and the highest diversity of coral on the entire coast of East Africa. It's a virtual megacity of underwater life that is also very real above water threat. Kiunga's coastline is inhabited by the Marine Reserve's terrestrial custodians, humans. But these villagers are also facing a threat. And the threat to the human settlements is affecting the marine life as well. We all know that a healthy environment is good for our health. But are healthy humans good for the environment's health? The Kiunga National Marine Reserve has been badly affected by a whole host of problems. Some of it has been natural, things like red tides and an El Nino that heated up the water, killing sensitive coral and fish. But the others have been man-made. As people in the village struggle to survive, the surrounding ecosystem and its inhabitants feel the effects. So what has caused the people of Kionga to adopt practices so out of step with nature? When people are struggling uh, for survival on a daily basis, it is very difficult to talk to them about uh, the long-term protection of the resources that they depend on for life. Conservation efforts in many parts of the world will never be successful if the local people aren't part of that effort. And in order to en enroll them in that effort, uh, we all need to be attentive to their most basic needs, which typically are health care and education and the need for food, basic survival. Johnson & Johnson have teamed up with the World Wildlife Fund to supply villages with clean water, a dispensary, and education. Previously, people often became sick due to many reasons such as drinking dirty water. We had no hospital to treat the sick and there was no other development in the village. It took three full days to get to the nearest hospital. Before we started our, our health care uh, project, people used to have lots of uh, malaria and intestinal infections, stomach infections from unclean water. The water was dirty from the wells. And, but since we came in and covered the wells and put in hand pumps and treated the, the water in the wells, a lot of that has improved. We've, done, we've actually done away with all the stomach infections. Malaria has gone down. We've been able to provide uh, insecticide treated mosquitoes. And once in a while, working with partners in, at AMREF and in the Minister of Health, we've been able to provide health care uh, through mobile clinics to all the villages in the project area. Therefore, the general health of the population has improved. Education about HIV and AIDS and family planning have been provided and very well received. So, um, really have made, I think, enormous progress in improving the quality of life of people in this region and, and opening the conversation about conservation of the marine ecoregion. With daily life now becoming easier and healthier, the villagers found they could spend less time on survival and more time creating better livelihoods. Livelihoods that were eco-friendly and sustainable. The marine reserve is also feeling the benefits. Many of the sea creatures are now protected by the villagers instead of being killed for food. And by learning how mangrove trees help the entire local ecosystem, people have stopped using them for firewood. So the answer to our question is yes, healthy humans are good for a healthy environment. Everything is connected, 
And sometimes, in order to help the environment, we need to help each other first.